I'm obviously very happy that President Biden has come out and said that he wants to pull us out of Afghanistan. And that, of course, is something that's long overdue. We you know, don't need to elaborate any further as to why that is obviously that essential. This is, in this. this is part of it? Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying So then you, I guess so. News and Amuse is going to correlate with what we're talking well, about. Well, I so just, that's what I wasn't sure if you were understanding. And no, I, I understand. So, but if you want to have a nice little, you know, personal moment about Joe Biden and the idea of us leaving Afghanistan, which I just don't even think is going to happen anyway. No. And again, I, I understand that a lot of people are very hesitant to even think that it's possible. Um, I think that there are a number of components See? to, yeah, no, I, there's definitely a number of components <coughs> to what, uh, you know, Biden has mm -hmm. said already that would lead you to believe that he, you know, he may very well be serious about this, but ultimately you're saying we're not pulling out of there for another five months. Who knows what could happen over the next five months? That's not even the more like blatant problem, which is you you don't get to simultaneously be talking about removing troops from Afghanistan and asking for an increase in the military budget. Correct. Those two things are what I call oxymoronic. If and you're going to remove troops with from emph one- emphasis on moron. Well, if Sorry. you're going to be removing troops from one nation and systemically putting them into another, so what does that get us? No, and even if it's not troops, even if we just reduce our troops, but we increase our drone program or we whatever it is, you adding money to our military budget is be I don't even know if there's a word for this. It's beyond absurd. Like it's just so offensive and disgusting at this point. And so to do that, but then say you're gonna get out of Afghanistan, yeah. That doesn't really do it for me, Joe. Not to mention, one, I don't believe you. And two, you'll make it be, oh, well, we got to do it Come this on, way. Man. And it's a slow process, which it shouldn't be. But it know, shouldn't be. You know the thing. And I'll refer, yeah, the thing. And I'll refer to Bo, who talked about this um, either today or yesterday. Bo, the fifth column. You know, you talk column. about Bo like everyone knows Everyone you're should know who about. Bo is. Well, if they watch me, they'll start to know. There so explaining based on the number of troops that are there that pulling out of there is not something that's a big production. It just isn't. So if they're going to say that it's a big production, they're lying and there's something else going on, which of course there's something else going on. You know, so, you know, our producer, John, brings up a very good point. He often not does. Not to mention the border wall. Well, you know, oh, Joe God. Biden oh, did yeah. say that he is planning on finishing the border wall. And it's amazing how the neoliberal oh. class, Washington Post, New York Times, are all like, okay with it. No, they're just not mentioning. Well, it's sort of like the same thing as- uh, Well, we started it, so I guess we got to finish it. But Joe's not a racist. Trump is. Remember yeah. that. And, very and we're still not going to talk about the fact that it's just physically not possible in many locations. That is true, especially and with the Rio Grande. That's one of the biggest it's issues. That and, and just the uh, fact that in a lot of places it's private property, in some places it's public property. It's a train wreck of a problem, which was why this was ridiculous in the first place, well, among the fact that it's xenophobic, nationalistic, and unnecessary. But you have to remember that I have no doubt that part of the military budget increase is to deal with the wall. <sighs> like that's where the I billions just, upon billions I, of dollars is likely going, if you think and about it. See, again, this is more more examples of policies and things that are not based on reason and science. They're just not. That's sure. not based on reason. A wall protects us from nothing. Nothing. Policy majority, is what protects us. The majority of people that are in this country illegally came here legally in the first place. So the fact that you think that by the, if we spent the money uh, that's putting on this wall and put it into our education system, or better yet, why don't we build some affordable housing for those people at the border and instead of keeping them in cages, we put them in nice condos? I don't know, but I'd rather spend that money on anything but that stupid wall. Well, again, we could end the war on drugs and that would probably <clears throat> curtail a, a migrant crisis infinitely more so than a border uh, wall. Well, would. except for now we're talking about an administration that just fired staff members for uh, disclosing prior cannabis usage that was legal. So you know what, Joe? And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. You know why we're in Afghanistan. Yes. We're in Afghanistan because of the poppies. Opium fields, okay? baby. So we are into the poppies. And I got no problem with the poppies, but the people of Afghanistan need to decide what to be doing with their own poppies and profiting and doing whatever they want to do with their poppies. And it's not our business. No. That's my problem. They want to sell their poppies and we want to buy them and we want to create drugs and we want to legalize it. Yay us. But this is, this is not our problem. So the no. fact that somebody who is so anti-cannabis is, is 
still participating in this nonsense because we ultimately know that they're profiting off of the drug war. It's just, yeah, yeah. And again, moronic. We are not going to have a solution to this problem because unfortunately, and, and this is something we'll talk about with Wendell Potter when he comes on, corporate special interest money is why we can't have nice things. Corporate special interest is what dominates Capitol Hill. The trillions of dollars that's unaccountable by the Pentagon, the fact that the there, there's like two separate military budgets. There's the ones that's discretionary spending, and then there's just ones that goes to the Pentagon to do whatever the hell it is they do. They have so uh, much unaccountable spending and lost money. Oh, and yeah. um, it, it's just- um, Look, remember the day before 9-11, you had Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld speaking to, I want to say it was- He's uh, evil. Oh, he is. But he was speaking to, I think he was on the Senate floor, if I'm not mistaken, talking mm. about how the Pentagon has over $2 trillion in unaccounted money. Today, I think it's over $10 trillion. So again- uh, How are you going to pay for that? How are you going to pay for it? Yeah. How <laughs> the hell are you going to have universal health care? You can't the Pentagon have it. Pentagon's the got the money. That's what you- Hey, let's get all the unaccounted money from the Pentagon and we can cover Medicare for all for well, at least a decade. And I still say that all the money that we should be taking out of um, patrolling type of law enforcement and give it to the firefighters and the teachers. Oh, yeah. I think that's a good because the firefighters need more money in their pensions and we're trying to take their money. So do the paramedics. Yeah. Well, yeah. But that's include when I'm talking about they're well, included. One they're one. under. It's one of the same. They're okay. under the same banner as far as their labor, their union, they're negotiating. So that's what I'm speaking And about. so what's a good segue into a second story of our news and amuse, of course, is Pramila Jayapal. Listen, we think the world of her, she does Keep a great us. job. But the problem is, is that a lot of people are getting tired of the words not turning into action. And that's a good point. Because we're obviously big supporters of Hull Washington, which is the single payer healthcare initiative in Washington yeah. State. Representative Jayapal has not even acknowledged this movement, yet alone support it. And that's disturbing because that should not be the case. If you really want to see single payer right. health care come to play, then you have to exert your influence. Now, if your argument for not exerting influence at the state level is because you know that your governor, Jay Inslee, is not going to sign that bill into law, then it just goes to show you that this culture of silence to protect the institution, much like in policing, is why this is a significant problem. Now, to Jayapal's credit, she has come out and said, no, Joe, I don't agree with you on increasing the military budget. I think we need to reduce the budget. Well, yes, of course, we need to reduce I the budget. I thought that's why we were talking about uh, yes. Pramil Jayapal, but you're saying that the fact that she is the key, the lead sponsor of Medicare for All, but yet she doesn't sponsor it at her state level. This is, is what you're speak, talking about, what, what support I've, it rather at her state and, level. And the point of that is that it speaks to a greater issue here because she is the chair of the Progressive Caucus. So if you really want to see the military budget reduced, which it should be by hundreds of billions of dollars a year, what are you prepared to do? You can't just say that you want this to happen. What are you prepared to do? Are you prepared to hold up a bill? They're getting to where they have the numbers to be able to do things. No, and they actually, do. They right. do. Like the Democrats would not have a majority if not for the progressive block. So the progressive block can actually, you know, play chicken with them. And they don't. Are they willing to do that? No, apparently not. Look, empirical evidence shows clearly not. Um, and But now, speaking of unions... <laughs> It was you know, we're never going to be able to get away from the police story because it encompasses a lot of different things. Uh, and so when I talk unions. about the code of silence, mm. which is a very big part of this problem, the code of silence ultimately moves not just to what happens when you have bad officers in the field. You also have bad officers doing extremely nefarious things. Now, again, reference to a movie. I think it was a book, too. I, I, I believe it was. Um, Academy Award winning film, really great film. Spotlight. That's about the church. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you haven't seen Spotlight, I highly recommend that you take a look at it because it is about the Catholic Church scandal in Boston that took place, I want to say, in the 90s, I think it yeah, was. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. this is something that's been going on for a really long time. That was the first time that anybody ever really went with the yeah, story. The, yeah, the, it well, listen, the Archdiocese is one of the most powerful entities on the planet by far. And so when the, when, when the Boston Archdiocese was basically under fire because they did have priests that were sexually molesting young boys and getting away with it. Well, guess who was, was, was essentially protecting them from not being prosecuted 
was the Boston Police Department. Yes. And so well, they're lockstep in with the diocese. So That's as, that, for sure. So as it turns out, and again, it gets back to the whole issue of the code of silence in the top down capitalist system that we have, you have the, 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 union, the, president. the union president of the Boston police has been molesting young boys since 1995. Oh, nice. And That's, it has been being covered up because there's no way you're doing something that long without people knowing. And, I, and and is it ironic in any way, shape or form that this directly crosses over into the same timeline as to what actually happened with the Catholic Church? No, of course no. not. It makes no. They were working hand in hand. The police department was covering for the for the church and the church was facilitating, allowing police pederasses to just get whatever they want. As much as I think that there's a really good chance that Matt Gates is going to go down for trafficking because he technically did commit that offense if in fact he did have relations with this woman even if it was consensual <clears throat> because he there took is her across... no consensual okay but again he took her across state lines and if that is true and she is underage and that is trafficking and that is absolutely a federal offense and he could actually go to prison for the rest of his life that's how he serious won't. This is. the problem is how many people in government have this kind of dirt under their fingernails, whether it's them, them, whether it's a family member, a friend, whoever it is that they are protecting. And the truth of the matter is, it's all about that code of silence. If I'm going down, you're coming with me. Well, that's I'm I, not going alone. I think this is why we, the people that are in power are in power. It's, and you've been saying this a long time, and you've been saying it specifically about our local um well, I've always made, I've always been very clear that the biggest reason why Wasserman Schultz is still in Congress more than any other reason, not just because she takes all the corporate money and has a lot of people under her thumb, as much as any reason she's still in Congress, she was the head of the party for six years. She was the chair of the DNC for six years. She knows everybody's dirty laundry, everybody's, especially the ones who are under the corporate dollar. So what does that mean? That means that Debbie has essentially put out the word that if I go, I'm taking every one of you with me. That's why no one, and I mean no one around here stands up to No, me. no one will cross Nobody. her. Nobody. And I do think a lot of it has to do with, you know, in, when you hear things like what's going on with Matt Gates and it's people are acting like they're clutching their pearls and they're so appalled. Um, if that gets publicized, then that means it's happening a lot of different times amongst a lot of different people where it's not being publicized. So that's just a common thing. So yeah, imagine the dirt that exists on a lot of people. Oh, so percent. right, right. It's just you know you can't uh, you can't clean can't up after yourself fast enough. Just I guess. how bad it can ultimately get, and that to me is more than any other reason why this is such a a hot button issue because we don't know. We don't know how far the depths of this goes, but what we do know is that this culture exists in a lot of different places. It's very visible right now in law enforcement, just because of everything happening. The fact that there's been a second slaying in the same city as the most hot button trial we have seen in quite some time, especially with law enforcement. You I'm never just, see anything like this. I just, I, I really, I feel bad for the people of Minnesota and this region. Sure. I really do, because this is all coming out of their wallets. Oh, yes. And again, it comes full circle as to what needs to happen here. You need to end qualified immunity. This is what can unite the entire country. If you say abolish police, you will lose, and you'll lose badly. And we don't want to lose. We want to start taking We're power. winners. We want to win. Yeah, I want to win. I want to win because I want us to progress. We don't need to continue to deal with people who are impeding progress. So you have to get people to check their egos at the door. But a lot of people don't want to check their egos at the door. People are viscerally reacting to the way things are going, but then you never actually get anywhere. And on top of that, you still have to, you still have to deal with dishonest actors. You still have to deal with people who are going to say hyperbolic things because in reality, they don't want it to change. They want things to stay exactly the same. And if they come off as being a little too crazy, the moderates, if you will, are going to think, well, now we definitely do not want to give them the benefit of the doubt. And we definitely don't want them involved in this capacity. So that in itself is why we really need to think long and hard about how we message things and how we attack them going forward. Because if you don't have a good point of attack, then what's the point? Well, this is why I think a lot of times the left is not successful. 
and they just can't seem to get out of their own way. So when you bite off more than you can chew, when you attempt to do things that have no firm standing and you do not recognize where other people are, trust me, most people do not have any love for the corporate special interest money that is in politics, but it all depends on how you present it to them. If you come at them with this idea that everyone is an enemy, it's not going to work. You can't just assume that everyone who is in law enforcement is a bad person, but the culture of silence is what makes them complicit in what goes Same on. Same as you can't assume that all priests are child molesters, but there is definitely a culture of silence and complicity. Now, I am not suggesting that defunding the police. I think it's demilitarizing the police is the proper terminology. Yeah, but people but want to hear that the money is not going to be going there. That is correct. And the money ought not be going there. And I, you know, I understand what they're saying. I just think that arguing about the semantics of it is not as important as addressing the policies. So we need to be fighting for, you know, to end qualified immunity. We need to be fighting for specific policies that are feasible with that are being done that are more tangible and saying defund the police while catchy is very amorphous and it leaves way too much up to discretion. It's not actual policy. It's nothing that you're going to install. It's nothing that's going to be universal. So it's just not as productive as coming up with actual policies. Um, but yeah, I would like to see a lot of money taken away from policing and given to the firefighters and the teachers. And I think that that is a lot more reasonable than just saying, you know, let's defund the police. I think if you were to say reallocate police funding and give it to the firefighters and paramedics, I think that there would be a lot more receptiveness to that rather than people just saying, I hate the police, take their money away. Well, they're so, starting to kind of really earn that. I got to tell you. Yeah. Like every day that goes on, it's like they're just, I feel like they're digging themselves deeper and deeper. They're making it easier and easier for things like qualified immunity. Hunter, can you please behave yourself for just one day, please? Thank I, you very much. I think much. that these officers, though, are facilitating legislation that will eventually end qualified immunity more across the board because these yeah. types of actions are only going to instigate those kinds of policies. So, you know, that's going to help our situation. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.